Good afternoon. So I am doing one of my first tutorials. You'll have to forgive me, but I did say we were going to work on this and then or I showed it to you guys yesterday and I really wanted to nail it down and show it to you guys. So this is the Heroes in Retro turning my letter size papers into TN size journals and my best way to do it right without cutting and um, without cutting it a bunch and gluing it onto other pieces and trying to not waste the ink you had or waste the paper you used, right? So why not? <laughs> so yesterday I mentioned uh, folding these into an accordion style and we were having problems with size and I did figure out how to do it, right? I did. I worked it out. So I have one sort of done and two more that I will walk you through real quick because I think I got it down pat and tell you what I did how to do it and where I think the measurements are. So if you decide you want to do this, you always can go back and see where I was and then you can perfect it that works best for you. So it's just sort of a, a starting point because I'm hoping you guys are all way better at this than I am and you'll, and you'll be able to perfect on what I've done. Okay, so we've got our three pages. Um, so what I was, I was able to finally get this to accordion perfectly. And then I went ahead and put papers in between the two tabs we were working on yesterday. Now, if you did not watch the reveal on this kit yesterday, I will, that's where I'll show you from start to finish on a new, on a new set, um, what we did to get this, this little inserty tab. They do end up being four and a quarter, so seven to 11 and a quarter after, and they end up being for, yeah, just like, it is literally barely eight and a quarter depending on your cut job, eight and a quarter tall, which is definitely thinner than a standard, like a fold in half paper journal. If you take eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper, trim off the white and fold it in half, you get this, right? This is what you get. We do a nine by six cover on it and you have like eight and a quarter by, you know, what do we do? We go, let's see, five, it's like five, five and a quarter wide. And you end up with, you know, we yeah, have six to third to almost 14. So like eight inches tall. And it's very wide though. Okay. This is a standard fold it and fold my digitals in half after you trim it, make the cover nine by six. And that's become pretty much a standard good size journal. But if you like the traveler, traveler notebook style or size style and size, we definitely have to get more narrow. The, t the height is still great. The eight, eight and a quarter height is still awesome. Um, which a normal eight, 11 by eight and a half paper works for it. So we just need to shrink our five and a half inch fold down to four and a quarter without trimming it and trying to do a lot of gluing. So there's this cute accordion style um, that I am so sorry. I do not know who came up with the idea. I know Gail and Lorette have both been working on these guys. Shabby might be working on these. USA, uh, US, Crafty USA may have been making these ways to use your scrapbook papers um, and turning them into flip, flip books, I think they're calling them. Little mini flip books, little mini journals. And you're by accordioning the inside of the paper, you're creating these tabs that you can glue journal cards and envelopes and in this case, or pages to, um, to make this cute flip journal book. And in this case, we're going to use these tabs to keep our pages inside. In the end, though, my gluing was a little weird. I see now it's starting to stick as it's drying. But we're going to attach each one of these signatures to a cover by using the old school Traveler Notebook um, rubber band style. If you do happy planners or did happy planners and ha did journals and sort of had that genre way back when, because uh, it's been a few years, they used to make traveler, traveler covers, notebooks. Sorry, and I'm a little off camera, but I want to show you guys something and I have it stuck, so that's why. They would make these pretty covers like this, right? Really nice and soft. And they would use rubber bands, put them through the holes, right? And use these rubber bands to put, I can actually show you, just ignore the happy planner part. You would put your notebooks in them, in the middle, Right down the right, whoops, well, we're definitely right down the middle, but I'm off by one. <laughs> and it would keep your pages, your notebooks, everything in place. Okay, you would do them, of course, a little tighter. This is definitely a little loose for whatever reason. I think I just need to tighten it up somewhere. I, ah, that's the bottom. Oh, all right, well, that's what that does. Anyway, won't be that way. Anyway, we're gonna find uh, like little kids' headbands 
or large rubber bands, and we're going to use the same effect. We're going to rubber band or elastic these signatures in and around the, the binded cor uh, cardboard covered cover. That way, I'm not trying to sew these in and then sewing these into the signature, but we're going to make it literally the traveler's notebook effect with these little notebooks and the rubber band capability, which I think is absolutely adorable. I absolutely love it. Um, it's for something different. I'm not sewing it in. I'm not stapling it in. I'm not, um, I don't know, something different. I haven't done one like this in a while, so it'd be fun to attempt it. Um, and I, I just go to Dollar Tree and find the bright colored, um, usually the headbands work because they have just the right amount of elasticity and um, you don't have to worry about like any heavy amount of whatever. So even me for this one, even though this, this cover is meant for multiple things, I even used the one of these things to keep this sort of semi in place so it didn't roll. And then I tuck, of course, the covers into the pockets. So when I go to close this, oh my gosh, yeah, right? I don't, I, it all should stay together, but um, I have a very full happy planner. And then you just, you know, you find a way to, of course, snap it together and look. But the Traveler's Notebooks, um, when Happy Planner came out and other ways to use journaling and tracking, they came out with this concept. And we have definitely have um, moved it over into the, the journal department. So, sorry, extra papers. So that's my goal at the end here is to get the bright color rubber bands in red and green and yellow and blue. And we're going to use that to keep the signatures inside the cover. So give me a second. I want to make sure we, we're staying in line because I definitely shrunk things back up or zoomed back in, but I want to make sure like we're not moving anywhere. Okay. I even see everything I'm doing. So figure out the size and figure out how to fold this. And I'm sort of doing a reverse on the whole scoring idea. We mentioned yesterday about trying to score into the paper and I couldn't find the scores. They weren't deep enough. So I've sort of done it backwards. For me, and that's me. I work everything backwards. And it may work for you as a trick, and it may not. So let's see what happens. So we're going to the next one. Now, all extra pages that were not um, the cover of your signature, I cut down to eight by eight. Okay? This way, when they started stacking, they would stay inside the signatures. Because if you look, they just come up just a smidge short, and they do start stacking on each other, depending how well I glued them. So I went eight by eight doing my best to keep things in the middle, ha ha. And so the things would stay inside the signature and they wouldn't stick out much. And if I want things to stick out, we're gonna glue things, we're gonna add layers, tabs, whatever, to make it stick out. But I wanted to sit inside the signature. So I'm cutting everything, every, any extra piece of paper down to eight by eight and folding in half so it's four by eight when we're done. So I took that one background paper we, I revealed yesterday. This is one of my patterns with one of my Duotone, du um, call it my comic book page, but it, it's not comic book, but it so feels like it, element. Okay, so that's one of my signature on the inside, and I'm not making it the immediate signature, I'm making it sort of inside. And I have my attempt at a coffee dyed paper, ha ha, you can't see it, I can barely see it myself, but it made it all crinkly and fun to listen to. I did find it light paper, parchment paper, and then just a really yellowy color, which is great because we have a very little yellow in the kit and it definitely needs it. You can't have you know, retro without your primary colors. So the order I've gone in is this one, this one, and then this inside the this, this secondary signature. So let's fold all these in half real quick. Find your lines, you know, all that good stuff. If you cut it right, it shouldn't be a problem, but huh, it, my cutter is starting to go. So it doesn't really matter which way because it's eight by eight. So four by, you know, four by eight works no matter which way we go. So I did it like this. And then I put, I'm going to put the sign the secondary signature inside. Okay. And they're a little off. I didn't, that one did not quite come out right, but that's okay. I don't mind if they're not perfectly, um, that's the fun of the journals where the pages aren't perfect. They're not the exact same size. It keeps it sort of interesting. And my luck, I won't be able to include them all in together anyway. Yeah, that one is really tall, though, for an 8x8. Eight eight. Interesting. Hmm. Is it really? Yeah, that's a little off. Okay. Well, if I get a moment, I may trim it. We'll see. My cutting skills. So, all my 8x8s, eight right? This is the inside. This is going to be the paper that I'm going to use to decorate, belly band, put tucks, cards. That's just a fun, you know, then that's your fun decorative you don't have to worry about. And this one, you would either journal on these pages, because they're nice and light. You could journal on this page. 
We have three of them so we can vary where we journal it. The first one had a really pale color on it, so I was gonna use this for journaling and maybe this for journaling. And then the inside maybe it's gonna get decorated or it's gonna be four journal pages all in a row in the middle, but the outside's all decorated with all of our cards in our, in our pockets and our, our tags, okay? Now here's the fun part. I call it the fun part, it's just me. So this is how we figured out how to do this. I went ahead and we're gonna do it from the back side so that it folds where I need to. We want four and a quarter for front and back. And that was my problem. I was trying to do four on one, so four and a half on the outside edge and then thought it would all match up and I had that extra loop, extra, extra length on the back. Either way, instead of scoring it, I've lined up my ruler. I tried to mark it last time, it didn't quite work. So we're just gonna line up the ruler my ruler does have something of a beveled edge, which is nice. And I'm gonna to try to carefully, haha, ha, this is where it's fun. I'm gonna start folding it up towards the ruler. I know it might be hard to see, I hope, hopefully it's not too bad. Now, actually I'll move this over onto the eight. Eight is the eight, it's gonna work for us too. Um, no, we'll go eight and a quarter. I'm gonna to try to keep the paperwork lined up on the four, in this case, and right on eight and a quarter, we're gonna line this sucker up. And what I did was sort of a reverse on the scoring. We are going to start folding it up. You're gonna press down really hard on your ruler as much strength as you can. And you're gonna use your bone and you're gonna press it right up against that ruler, okay? It's still scoring it, but we're doing it sort of backwards. See, it's still scored, just not the way you expect it. And that, this is where a little bit of trial and error is gonna pop into place because if something is not perfectly cut somewhere, the ruler moves a little bit, but we can adjust it a little bit, I noticed. Um, and I'm gonna to try to get, see I moved my thing. But you're just gonna keep sort of wedging it until you feel you've gotten it as good as you can. Let's see, it doesn't look straight. And at that point, you're gonna probably rely on hoping that you cut straight and you're gonna just press it down. So there's my front, pretty close to perfect, four and a quarter, okay? I'm gonna do the same to the back. We're just gonna flip it upside down. I moved over to the five, so you have to forgive me there. But four and a quarter, so you know, just basic math. You know, I love how the kids are like, I'm not gonna use math. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, your basic math, you are. You are always going to use your basic math in everything you do, it doesn't matter what you're going on to. But press down really hard, fold it up, start folding it up and just running that bone up against the edge if you can. Of course, I just screwed that up, but try to find it and do it up. Now, I'm doing this probably totally backwards, totally crazy. Luckily, this part you're never gonna see. It's gonna be in the fold of everything, but look, it did work, it did. Okay, so there is technically everything we're going to have to fold in to make this perfectly line up. Now, smack in the middle. If done correctly, it is a two inch window. So now, we need to fold down the middle to get, yes. And since you're sticking to the same side, we have the back we have the back side up so you're folding inward i'm going to line it up down the nine because it's between of course eight and ten duh but just so you know why i'm using the nine i'm gonna do the same thing all over again you can sort of see barely i know the camera's probably in the way but i am just pressing up against my ruler with my bone and it's giving me sort of a very heavy score still now to make sure it really works you don't even have to do that i just realized on this one if you want a perfect middle if your paper is cut right, you're just gonna fold it in half. Okay, you're gonna fold it actually right down the middle at 10 and a, 10 and a, 10 and a quarter, or five and a quarter, five and a quarter? Isn't that funny? Right at five and a quarter, halfway through, you're gonna fold it. Or do what I did and do the, do the boning thing, okay? But that's the part that is gonna allow us to poke these guys up. So now I'm gonna flip it over. And now we're gonna do the middle of the halfway, middle of the, middle this one inch thing now becomes half inch and we need to fold it outward so it has it gives us our inserts or our tabs on the inside now this might be smart smarter on this round so i'm going to go in the halfway mark if i do these my smaller bone so that i'm not leaving such a huge crease on the inside i do the best i can it may be a little less painful be very careful as i can rip right through it but here is my first potential tab. 
it really is just folding and fo folding in half, folding in, you know, folding down, folding it a half, and folding down the front and back, and then folding again. But here we go. We have our first beautiful little binding thing. It sort of reminds me, actually, of the, you remember the folders, our project folders, um, when we used to do, we used to have book reports, and you'd either have pockets or no pockets. You may have a clear front, but it was a file folder, right? Or not even a file folder. It was a, it was a project folder. Oh, here. Sorry. This is what exactly what it reminds me of. Oh, these when we were growing up, right? And you would have the pockets, and you'd have the tabs on the inside, right? And you'd ha you'd have to punch these through your 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 clear coats. And this is exactly what this reminds me of. Exactly what it reminds me of. Oh, how funny is that? Now they put brackets brackets in the middle to keep everything together, and still let you fold it over a little bit. So that's not a bad idea, right? Um, I'm gluing it, and then using rubber bands to keep it in place. Um, you could, we, if you had grommets, you didn't want to mind giving up. You could grommet these pages in between the, the each one of these, and then that would give you holes. Well, holes only in the middle. That, but the. But two brackets, top and bottom, might give you a sewing capability, like somewhere to, a way to put ribbon through here and maybe to the outside to attach it. There are ways. So if you don't want to use rubber bands, maybe you could grommet it, grommet it, and do like we do with our old project folders. Flip it over. Um, things like that. So that's what it reminds me of. It so reminds me of the project folders. And I was a huge on book reports. I love those. I put everything in the clear pockets or I punch them through and I had my cover, my inner covers and my top. Oh my gosh. I loved those things. Those were like my candy. Oh my goodness. I was a, I was a nerd. I had to have, you know, pretty book reports and covers and mm, so be careful though. I do see the possibility of ripping these because it isn't on cardstock. But look, it's a little messier than the first one I did. I think I'm being a little more forceful and I don't need to be. But the nice thing is a lot of this is going to get covered with our pages. Like we're going to be covering it up with papers. But look at that. And pretty, pretty close. I'm still not perfect. Wow. I don't know what happened there. The first one worked so well. But maybe because I'm on camera this time. Hmm. Uh. Shoot, I was so I was so excited with that first one, and then I got off. Then I was off. Well, shoot. I can go here. Now it could be the cutting. It could be the folds. Could be a lot of things. You can sort of work your way out. Work your way out to try to line these two up. Or if you're really happy with the inside, and you just don't want to mess with it because we are going to glue it down. You trim it. If it's really noticeable and it's really bugging you when we, once we glue it down, you just trim off the edge a little bit before you, you know, when we're all sitting down, you trim it down. But that's the gist. If you can figure out your spots and you don't overscore it, maybe um, you want your four and a quarter where well, you fold it in half and do one inch out, one inch out, and then do half inches in the middle. And that should give you four and a quarter, two inch in the middle, four and a quarter. And now you'll have to, because you'll probably have to adjust that a little bit as the, depending on your print work. So I would say trim off the white, fold it in half to get your down your middle, and then fold each end that I would say go two inches, one inch out from the middle both ways to score your edges, and a half, half inch on the opposite side to do the middle. That makes sense. Halfway, one inch out, one inch out to create your covers and then half inch in the reverse so that you can pop your, um, so you create your inserts, right? Or your tabs, I should, well, inserts. Yeah, create your, create your tabs to put your inserts in. So then it's simply going through and gluing these two inner, this one, this inside inch, whoops, without going too crazy, enough. I would say go crazy, but I don't know. We're going to glue those in best we can, carefully as we can. And this might be where you get to make sure things stick down where you want them, where they feel like they line up better, but junk journals aren't perfect. And they shouldn't have to be, they shouldn't need to be. I think you need to do your best. I think it should be well glued down. I think it should be, you know, held together well. I think paper shouldn't become like falling off when you're done. People want to keep these for a long period of time, especially if you spend, you know, we charge a, if we charge a lot for the journal, 
we better make sure this puppy is going to last as long as we possibly can. It is paper. Things do deteriorate over time. You know, it's, especially if we're using something that's already um, old or, or in vintage and then we're trying to do something with it. Oh my gosh. You know, we have to hope that it's going to hold out. But there you go. I went back and I'm trying to sort of straighten out and even out the tabs after they're full of glue. So they don't feel too bumpy. And there we go. We have your inserts to glue onto and you have your cover and yeah i'm gonna have to trim this one we'll see how the next one comes out we'll see if it comes out any straighter but you get a gist right so you, if you can and it works for you if you have a scoreboard score it in your half inch both ways and in the, in the half and the halfway inch in between score them front and back and fold it up if you don't some you know, Two different rulers, rulers on a soft pencil that maybe doesn't have lead in it, or like, you know, it could be even this. Maybe if it doesn't, if it's not too sharp, maybe dull it down, and you can use the same thing. Find something soft to help give you that um, score that you need to help fold it. Something. And believe me, I don't have everything, so if I can get cra crafty and find a way to do it, so can you. Because wow. I, yeah, I'm slowly grabbing what I need to do this. So now the next step. This is where things could vary. Like you, we said, you could totally put this in here and grommet it. The thing is with the grommets though, as I found out, you still, if you do the grommets perfectly, then you have to sort of fold, like I was doing with the other one, fold your pages down a little bit so that you could lay them flat. Same thing with the gluing. I did notice on the front, if I wanted to open this, that you know, I, there's no guarantee that the middle is going to stay. So let's see if I can do a better job on this one and get the, um, I'm trying to see if I can get this one better glued. So it doesn't stick. So I went, I started gluing upward. I didn't do just down the middle and I was getting the sides caught. So I felt like I had to fold it back so that it would open. And I'm not so sure if that was the best idea, which is, I think what led me to the rubber bands, knowing that there were bands, if they were just the right el elasticity, they wouldn't bend the book, but they also wouldn't, um, they'd also keep the pages sort of in place. You're hoping that the glue is going to do a, a base job, and then you're going to rely on the rubber band, headband, to keep the rest in place. So I did trim it because it was bugging me. And then I'm going to try to center everything a little bit. And there's no great way to do this, except to maybe clip them in place. You could clip one side, but if you don't have it right, it doesn't, it, like when we, when we sew them in, they're not in there tight enough, you know, you could. But look, it fits nicely inside. This is the only thing I may trim off later, but I'll wait till I'm done and everything's in place. But we're gonna go ahead, I am. I do glue this front one though up the sides a little bit. I do want it attached to the binding. I do want it to be, you know, pretty stable. Um, that way it is doing its job. Now I'm, in the middle of my table, but it means I'm also on the bottom of my screen with you guys. So I'll try to move up a little bit. I brought my screen's right here. My, you guys are seeing it right here. But I wanted to make sure I had it where you guys could actually see what I was doing and not be too far away. All right, see, so there we go. So I do still have a nice middle. I'm using my bone. I'm be careful on the bottom though. Mm. I tore the other one too and I'm like, oh goodness. If worst case, washi tape. Washi tape is going to be our next thing um, where we connect each page. I may find a cute washi tape where I'm washing these guys down, the middle here nice and tight, so that they don't come apart. That is another thing we can do. If you find a cute retro washi tape that you like. Um, I don't really do any black and white, but maybe I can find a cool brown one or something. Um, maybe something with, you know, it's, if it was sewing, you would find a ruler one. I have to see if there's something in the RN department that has a cute um, washi, and I may get it just to be on the back, to be on the safe side. So I'm gonna need a lot of it if the gluing and the and the other thing does not work. So next one, I'm gonna try to stay right down the middle this time. I know it's not a lot of glue, but you want to make sure I make sure you get a little bit more glue and right down the middle. We're gonna try to stuff that right in there, pretty even. And I am relying on the fold to do what I need it to do and, and tighten up the thing because even with like a bone, bone like this, it can, um, bone folder, it can um, sort of, 
Ooh, that might have ripped it. No, okay. We do want it to just glue down the middle and stay in there and then stay in that crease nice and tight without ripping or tearing. So I think it's a cute idea. The grommet could be a cute idea. So if someone does this and, and the grommets work really well and you feel they still fold back okay, let me know. Something maybe on the next round when I decide to do another TN, I'm gonna have to like investigate that ordeal. Right now I'm using my grommets for the more heavy cardboard uh, ring binders or ringed journals. So I don't have a lot of them. White ones would be sort of cute on this though. Well, the white ones would be cute on this. I have a tendency of getting a little close to the bottom and not so close to the top, but I can't see the top that well. I guess I could turn it sideways, huh? That's okay. Bottom is not a bad thing. All right. So yes, if you're catching this tutorial on how to turn letter paper into a t into a TN journal, the this kit was revealed yesterday. So just go back to my digital reveal series and um, it is the heroes retro heroes and retro journal kit that is out on my Etsy shop and I was just like you know let's just go give this a shot see if I can figure it out not make you wait this way if this excited you and you like the idea you had the kit you had a small tutorial and you know hopefully it would spark a new project Especially if we need one really quickly and this does become a Mother's Day or um, a thank you to a special nurse who maybe has been the mother to you or mothered you throughout this whole ordeal. You know, whatever we need. So I'm actually going to trim that real quick but because it is a little off. And that's okay. Again, signatures don't have to be all the same size. Papers don't have to be all the same size. They don't have to be all lined up. It's just getting enough. And I'm sorry this is big. Give me one sec. I just wanted that smidge off. And really, it is. It's a smidge. A smidge. <laughs> but it was enough to bug me. I know we were talking about it yesterday that if we had left it, we could make a tab. But that's not enough to make a tab or anything else with. All right. So there's two, right? We've got this one. They all have basically the same paper in them except for that inner, that inner piece, sort of our third piece in. So far, yeah, they're gluing up a little bit near each other, but I'm not going to stress over it right now. If I start using this and we find out it's, it's buggy, it's getting in the way, we'll start folding them back a little bit. I know on this side's a little better because it, you know, opens up more, but if they get stuck, we'll just do a little bit of folding like you would have done. And yeah, that one, almost perfect. I don't know how. Now, this is not the original. Yesterday's fold job was a disaster as I was trying to show it to you guys, and I didn't want to leave you that way either. And I will use that as, I will cut that up and we'll scrap it to help with the front cover because nothing ever gets wasted. We make sure, hold on guys, my thing, um, you know, nothing goes to waste, especially when you're printing things and you're using ink and paper, you do not want it to go to waste. So I will cut up that first attempt and we will use it to collage the front cover. I'll try to get all, all the ladies on the front cover. All my favorites, I love her. You don't see a lot of her, she's generally just a little chunk. She was off a graphic, she was on the edge of a graphic and I was like, but she's so cute and I love how she just sort of peeks out. And I love her red hair with the little, little puff in the front. It's a hairstyle I do quite often myself. <laughs> now when I was trimming all these down, I do end up with all these little bits of bits and pieces of paper, which these become great washi bands where you could maybe turn them sideways and use them as pockets. We can add them to the edges of the paper. If we wanted to go the reverse, we can make them paper tucks, uh, fold them in half and, and make them over the, over the page bands. All that. I mean, that little bit of that on the other hand, it's a little bit of washi, and that will be a fun addition. So, now last but not least, we'll do it one more time and see if we can get this working out. If you see what I've got and you're good to go, you know what I'm doing, then you can, you're more than welcome to stop. I appreciate it. It's Joanne with a Jewel Design. And I'm glad you stopped to watch this little tutorial. I hope it will help you along with this kit or any other kit I do. Uh, a lot of my kits are, are decorated right and left to where there is stuff in the middle where it's empty and it's light and you could do the same thing with it. I think almost any one of my kids, most of my kids will allow you to do it. There's a few that have some flowers and stuff down the middle, but according them, according them up isn't a huge burden. It's not the end of the world. So I'm glad to know that I can take one of my, you know, letter sized papers and make them into something as cute and as simple as a traveler's notebook. Does make me extremely happy. So this time we're gonna do this maybe the way I was supposed to. Now that I think about it, we're gonna find that halfway mark, right? Let's try this a different way this time. There's my halfway mark. 
right? So we're down to the five and a quarter, give or take. Um, five and a quarter, five and a half. That's be five and a half, yeah, almost, give or take. And then we're going to, I said one inch out, right? So let's see. This is where you actually turn it right side out because you want to fold it inward, not outward. When you're working on the outside flaps, outside folds, to make sure that it is, um, I'm trying to put that on a line, which that might be difficult, but well, maybe that's the other problem. Um, make sure that when you're wanting to, this is the outside cover where the, the folds work in your favor. We you definitely want to make sure you, you are folding inward on, in, you know, in itself, right? I guess we would say wrong side or wrong side because it is the outs it is the inside of your book, not the outside. It's like thing about paper, right? You have your wrong side, which is still usable, but the wrong side would be the you know inside of your of your fabric or the back side. And then in this case, you know, it's the inside of your book or the inside of your paper. And then you have your so that's one inch out. And then we're gonna go the other way, same ordeal here. Hoping everything cuts straight. It's something you're because you're, you're relying on the cut on this, you're relying on the measurement of that and your hands. So I'm gonna do the other inch on this side. It's definitely putting all your pressure down. So man, if your hands hurt today, I am sorry. My hands will hurt when I'm done with this. All right, so there is our two inch sort of accordion space. So halfway and one inch, and if we did this right, we'll cross our fingers. Now, but now to get it to fold inward to make that, you do need to see the, the front. And if I did this somewhat correctly, they almost line up. Yeah, almost, almost line up. Not maybe where my cut job is off, who knows. Um, yeah, this is, it's not perfect. It's not, it's not the same as using a scoreboard where you can hit all the proper notes at four and a quarter. And you know what it and all and all of that. And four and a quarter, five and a quarter, six and a quarter, and then the half inch marks in between. I really wish, you know, but this is the closest thing I've got to a you know scoreboard and a way to fold and do this. So um, hopefully it gives you something to think about and a way to attempt this if you don't have it. And it's definitely if I keep doing these things. If I keep making journals the way I'm going, I may have to invest in a scoreboard. Or I'm buying one for my mom and with the understanding that I need to come borrow it. <clears throat> but the hard part is we never know when we're gonna do these the projects and so to have to go over in. Luckily she's like three minutes down the road, but still. And right now I'm having a problem, you know. Um, she's three minutes down the road, but still. When do I ever go over there and not sit and chat? So, yeah. All right, so here's where I'm a little worried. This one did have a slight glitch in its um, scoring. I realized it looked like it got a little away from me. So we'll see if that's going to mess up my insert, or not my insert, but my um, my measurement. Sorry, I'm trying to get my head out of the way. You can see me either botch this up or make it perfect, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not perfect. Oh, good Lord. Like I said, there's got to be another way to do this, but this is the best I can come up with, and I really hope it gives you guys an idea to, on, in a way to fit, to do this if you don't have a scoreboard. And I, and the ruler and the score and the scoring works usually really well on harder paper. Car, if you're using cardstock, it's great. Presentation paper, it's great. Really good paper, not enough. Um, so... Yeah, I, it's, this is my next best trick. And it's just, even though these line up on this end, everything else is just a little off. And that's just me. It may be, I can't cut straight. I can't fold straight, apparently. Hmm. So each one's a little off. And I think it just has to do with the cutting and, and the length, you know, trying to keep everything straight. So do the best you can, but I know it's possible to get an accordion to get the these inserts in the middle, you know, and um, give you something to glue to, grommet to, uh, fold and, and paper clip, whatever, whatever works, right? But it is a really cute idea. I really do like it. I'm really excited. Um, if we're gonna get at least this far with you guys right now, it'll be a few weeks before I get back to this. I have a botanical journal to finish. 
I have the um, mini file folder sets. I have a birthday present. I have a booklet, mini journal book, a, a loaded ephemera card for a birthday present, and um, what else? Oh, and then uh, we did. We already did the stackable version last week in the journal with me botanical pages that video last Thursday was um, you know that set so uh, that was you know productive um, but I still have the birthday loaded ephemera card to do and I still have my own book to make my own little journal book my own little mini journal book out of the green and purple set and we still have to then um, I don't I don't I think the pink one I gave to a friend I gave to two two friends and so I'm hoping that they will share their their creations on those and I then I have to decide what I'm gonna do with the blue and orange one that you guys have not seen yet and I think I'll give you guys a quick quick reveal on that this week at the end of the week and another journal with me ephemera is tomorrow so I'm just busy, 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 busy with you. I'm busy with you. So in this case, I think we're going to red on the outside. A lot of blue on this one, but we will go blue on the inside, red on the outside. Okay, blue on blue. I did a lot of blue. I did a lot of blue this time around. I didn't think about that on this. Yeah, you have to decide. I mean, there's so many pages to choose from, and the, the combinations are endless, so... I just want to pick these two real quick because I need to even out the pages from the other side. So um, I definitely, you know, needed a, something to put in the middle of this one. I don't, there was just no, there's no like bad choice, but you know, there's hundreds of choices because you could put any combination of the these three with any combination of these three and have endless paper options. Seriously, like print these three together, one, two, three, and then print these three, one, two. If you put them back in the back in your printer and then do these three, and you just kept rotating the pages every time you put them in and out, the three in, print them, like re reshuffle them, put them back in, do these three, like depending on your printer, you could have a quite, a, quite a variety of options of those two pages for filler a back front and back page to fill so it's not perfection I'm so excited and then I got off I don't know okay well I know you guys will do way better than I did I know you'll rock it and um, if you've been following along with Gail and the flip book um, I want to say Lorette touched base on it but I don't remember or though she showed me pictures <laughs> it's hard to remember which one's on which um, but I want to say a couple ladies have done it, so Gail's is the only one I've watched at this point. When it comes to the, the accordion flip book, eek, 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 put it back in, I'm too low. If I pull it out, put it back in, this is where, and I do have a fan in the background, so I'm hoping it's not too loud. We are Central California and we're mid 80s all of a sudden. And we're not even into May, which we've done that before. We're end of April, we get this hot spell, and then May comes down all of a sudden. All of a sudden, May is cooler than April. And then, but like two weeks ago, you know, I was doing all this stuff, and it was like the warmest spot in the house was my garage, and I was so happy. Because it was like not even 60 degrees outside. And then all of a sudden, we're, you know, mid-80s. And I'm like, oh, great, now my garage is too warm. But I have to work in it. That's where my workspace is. I was like, ugh. So I have to, I'm getting to that point where I don't have enough hours in the day and in the morning, so I have to work out here. The fan should be quieter than the heater because the heater was literally at my feet, which was right underneath my workbench. So at least the fan is sort of behind me. And it's not the big one. It's just a little table fan. So, so I'm just gluing down the middle to do this and trying to line them up the best I can. And yeah, so folding it does have a tendency of maybe spreading the glue out a little bit upward. But maybe just put the smallest drop just to keep things in place. And then like I said, you could either grommet it or, I don't grommets are the right word, but put those, well, I guess it is. Put those pretty hole, hole punch thingies, metal hole punch things in there. 
so that you could put some kind of bracket through it. I know I have some cute. Oh, I have. I know I have some cute stuff from Tim Tim Holtz that is for that kind of thing, and I don't even know where those are anymore. I said I had these cute things. I don't know where I put them. Oh, I misplaced them. But um, okay, there. I have these guys. Let's see. Yeah, well, these are screws. They actually aren't the one I thought they. I thought they were like we we saw in my project where they were supposed to open up, and these are actually all screws and stuff for vignettes. I was sort of bummed when I realized I didn't buy the right thing. But um, yeah, find a cute way to keep these in here. Um, so you have that binding like you would have in a project binder. You have your papers, whatever works. Because if you have ledger paper, coffee dye paper, parchment papers. Anything to write on, or you don't mind, like, are there good bases to, to put your pockets on, your tags, your tucks? Large, we may make a large, um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking out, flags, flag paper clips, things like that. I think we have a lot of potential in here to have some fun with these guys and having three of them to work with. And what we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12 pages to write and, and layer on with two that are, well, four that are empty. So what is that? Mm -hmm. Well, it's eight. So what is that? Eight and eight is 16, but it's two-sided? Well, it's eight and eight is, yeah, eight and eight is 16. So, um, you know, 16 pages to play with inside of a signature. You also have this side to work with, play with, large pocket. Large corner pocket, stackable cup pocket, whatever, or leave them blank, leave these guys blank and do all the work on the inside. But now we have three of them. Three gorgeous TN inserts, signature, signatures, I should say, ready to go, all used from eight and a half by 11 horizontal papers, or 11 by eight and a half horizontal letter papers that we turned into traveler notebooks, turned into TNs that are, oh, that's sticking. Well, that's going to be a problem. That are now a little more narrow than a standard journal. Gives you that long, sort of fun, I don't know. Well, you, you want you, you, it's a notebook. It's a notebook. It's a traveler's notebook. It's a guide. It's a down memory lane. But they are absolutely super cute. I'm so glad I attempted it. I'm really glad I tried for it because I really do think that these guys are just adorable front and back. I love all their their graphics. I love the images. And I hope you guys love them too. I hope this tutorial was helpful. If not too confusing, I'm sorry. Rewatch it a couple times maybe. I don't know. I don't think it's better the more you watch it. I don't know. It may not. <laughs> but thank you for joining me on this quick tutorial. And first one ever, uh, but don't expect too many of them. I, mm, I would not be the uh, guru of anything, but if I was going to figure it out, I wanted to share the knowledge with you guys so you could use my kit in this way if it works for you, if it appeals to you. And any other, any other of my kits, they're all about the same, um, except for maybe the retro uh, sweet treats where we do have a divided edge, a divided paper on that one. But a lot of the rest of mine have a very similar style where we have you know right and left decor and simple stuff down the middle where you could accordion that middle section and make you know still really cute binding elements or ta you know tabs or tabs to glue onto and then of course make what works best for you or just taking one of my basics and, and putting it on cardstock and making it a nice lightweight TN cover you know it works the same way and if it's a cardstock and using it as a cover then you've got two very solid pieces to glue you know journal cards to or tags to or whatever the, the options are endless creativity is never stale it's never stuck in a box and please break open the box find new ways to use it and i hope this helps you along the way so this is jolene with the jewel, Des jewel design with my heroes and retro uh journal kit and using it as a tn project hope you guys have a great day we'll talk to you tomorrow